don't know how my PC is going to cope with all this. I basically have Streamlabs open. I'm streaming into uh, Discord. I'm previewing the feed on Twitch. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to look at any questions. Um, in the live sessions feed on Discord. I guess I don't need that open. And I'm also going to record an OBS. I don't know if that's wise, but it says me downloading a 20 gig file later. You're early. Woo! You are early. I've just literally um, got set up. Free hugs for all. Yay. So, let me just edit what I'm going to be working on. It's not ZBrush time for walking. It's actually Blender. Uh, 700 tries or less character. Now I got inspired to do this when I looked at some art station stuff this morning. And I'll show you what I checked out. Uh, where did I post that? Our tutorials yet. So I checked out this. This is from an artist called Wendy De Boer. Or Bear, however you say it. But check this out, super low quality, 700 tries, as it says here, and it's like a 1K or 2K texture. And uh, you see the texture basically does all the work. And it's got a very cartoony style. So I'm gonna try and make something like this in you know, Blender. I've not used Blender for this kind of thing ever. So we'll learn together. Um, there's a few rules that you might think are true rules, but if you look at this, this is polygon right and every polygon is split some way it's either split this way or this way by a hidden dividing point called like an inner edge or whatever but that basically decides what way the triangle is going to go and when you export your mesh for a game engine you would triangulate it or if a game engine imports a mesh more likely it would triangulate it and that always happens because it's all made of triangles and it may divide it this way or it may divide it that way unless you actually tell it the way you want it to go. So you're going to end up with this kind of thing or this kind of thing, you know, um, just like you see in this image. So triangles, when you're doing 3D modelling, triangles might be one of those things that your art teacher or your 3D model teacher will say, oh, don't use triangles, they're bad because you don't know how the geometry is going to collapse when it's been deformed but the truth of the matter is you're going to want to force where the triangulation happens in order for it to look right um, and you can see here how the, the triangle is being sort of pinched in at the arm here so that it doesn't like collapse in and itself if you've got two loops and you're bringing your arm in those might fold over and you get a little kind of shade increase uh, like just there you would get a little kind of darker shading bit and that could look quite bad but you can see that looks fine right so I'm going to do something like this this is like super old school almost like PlayStation 1 type poly level probably before that like early PC um, so I'm going to close that I'm going to get started this is Blender and even though everybody hates Blender in fact I'm going to record as well this might create a massive lag. So start recording. And okay. So we're in Blender. The latest one, 2.9, doesn't matter. Uh, just one of the latest ones go, is good, 2.8 upwards. And we've got our default cube, famous default cube. I'm just going to move it to one side. And then I'm going to set its pivot to the 3D cursor, where I've basically set the that's the pivot there. I actually need to go into so right click and go to say origin 
to a 3D cursor, right? And that's that orange dot is basically the pivot point. Right, now that I've done that, I can um, use a modifier, mirror, right? This is the one I want. And I wanna have it go across this green line here, which is the Y. So I'm gonna do Y axis. Right, and that's just copied it, and it's like an active live mirrored copy. So anything to do with this, I'll do with that. Uh, a couple of things you want to change that I set up is you go into op options here. Don't know why it's not showing that. All right, you have to choose your vertex mode, so object edit mode, and like vertexes or something. But again, options and do auto merge, and I usually change this to like point one two five or something. And that just means like if you move one of these points, it gets close enough and you let go, that closer, let go, it's gonna snap to the closest vert and that way it you know, collapses. Now there's that issue I was talking about. You notice how the divide has decided, okay, this polygon has got a divide. You're probably thinking, well, this should be completely flat, but how's it gonna be completely flat? You know, how's it gonna be, because look at this shape. How is it going to be completely flat? Right? It it can't it can't decide. Look, it's open here, but you look at it that way. It's you know like that, but you look at it this way. So that's what I'm talking about. There's this divide that happens. And the only way to get rid of that is to put an actual cut there. Like you could use the knife, there's a knife cut knife, right? And choose the first point, your second point. And look, I've just corrected that the way I maybe want it. So that's exactly what that is. Right, so that's, that's that. Let's go up to our preferences and you wanna go to your key map. If you don't use Blender, you wanna change this drop down from Blender or whatever, right, to industry compatible. That will make it more like Maya or, you know, it just makes it better, right? It makes it work perfectly, you use Alt, middle, left, right, right up, right down, right, right down does this, right up does that, so it's even better than Maya, because Maya does the opposite and it's weird, um, mouse wheel without any alt, uh, so that does that, so we've got our little thing set up for doing symmetry, if I now choose this one, now you can press one, two or three, if you look at this, four is object mode, one edit, and two, three, f I think so, four object, one edit, but verts two, edges three. So you basically set up here for, you just do one, two, three, four, and Q, W, E, R, super nice. Uh, that is the one thing that's came out of Blender for me that's made it usable, finally. So I've got a symmetry uh, modifier on, this is the whole object. So now I wanna press one, two, and choose edges and you can see it now in symmetry right i need something to work with so i'm going to find some reference of a character is the stream okay is there any drop in frame rate or lags or jumps or anything let me know um and also i think just check my discord crew should be fine i don't think anyone's up this early on a sunday morning um yeah sunday service let's see so we've got pinterest now let's find some inspiration for a character uh, i'm just going to do concept character what i don't want this search concept character I want something fairly simple that's not going to cost millions of polys. Uh, this one looks cool. Let's do this one. All right, this looks cool. Find out space turtles don't snap, they shoot. Because there's a few simple shapes here. Let's just go back to the open image and new tab. Right, and as we got a full image. Now I'm gonna to have to improvise a bit. I don't have a front side and 
image plane type stuff I don't have any of that detail I'm gonna have to work out everything to do with this I'm gonna have to improvise areas where I don't see especially the back and under the arms behind the legs uh, but most of it's cool so it does look like a kind of rhino inside this helmet right and there's lots of cool texture the texture is going to take ages but the model shouldn't take too long so let's get started I'm just going to put this yeah, let me just copy it actually I'll put it into pure ref pure ref is a free tool that you can get from pure ref you can just download it pay some money if you want it but you can just put images in there and and it sits above everything <coughs> so you copy your image into pure ref and then just paste it right and that's now there double click and it will fit in the window and you can right click and move the window about so i'm just going to close that uh, i don't need that anymore and now i can scale this down double click Middle mouse moves that, but right mouse moves the whole window. As long as it's not too much in the way, that's fine. Right, so we've got that. Uh, overall scale, I'm not going to worry about the overall scale until it comes to rigging it. So I can work in any scale for the time being, and then I'll scale it down to the right size, then you would rig it. I don't know if I'm going to go as far as that. I just want to. Maybe I will, I don't know, I've never really tried rigging inside Blender, but we'll see how much time I've got. This might take most of the day. Uh, so I'm just going to delete the face. And I'll start with the kind of shoulders or something. Right, so I'm fairly new to Blender. Fairly new to it. I've used it a little bit in the past when it was horrible to work with. And I'm kind of assuming a lot of things are like Max, so if I was to use like shift and drag or something, I think it's E, no, Alt E, Shift E, Control E, there we go, Control E, uh, oh, is there a way to change the angle I want to extrude this in? Do that and then uh, just add edge loops. And it should snap at one point. I should have some sort of mirror snap. So I've got this modifier. Uh, I'm going to merge and I'm going to increase that until it snaps from both ends. There we go. So about 0.45. Right. You're learning with me, guys. That's the important point that you are like probably much better at this than me and you can see that's done exactly what I thought it would do is kept that inside face so I'm just going to delete that right um, maybe I can switch the modifier off There we go. So it's actually just a toggle here. So I can work on one side and not worry too much about the rest of it. So I'm just going to use like massive scale here, or will I? Maybe I'll just choose everything and scale it down. I wanted to choose back faces as well. Uh, is that this one? Combo X ray. Did that count? Oh, yeah. Okay. That one. That Chose them. Um, it's usually an option for back face, but I forget what it is. Right, I'll scale this down just so that I've got a decent size. To like the scale thing, it's like super sensitive. Is that because I'm an idiot and using it there? Yeah. Okay. Let's scale it up a bit because, in fact, let me just undo that. Because of the snapping threshold whatever I'll just work like this right, I'm gonna move that up there and I'm learning I'm learning I'm learning I'm learning just to remind you I'm learning why is that not moved to the actual cursor huh? Huh? what have I done wrong here
Okay, Google, Google, help me out, Google. Uh, Blender plus or to select the edge. Go in mode, select the edge, and then in its paste bar. See, it's annoying because you've got the gizmo, and it's a gizmo, it's next one, cursor. Gizmo. Uh, I think it might be a bug. Is it pivot transform point? Oh no, it's to reduce error, blah, blah, blah. I, I think that might be a bug. That just doesn't seem right at all. Right, because I expect this doodah to go up here right away automatically. If anybody knows, it's all right, I'll answer one question. Active element. Right, I'm trying to do extrude souls at control E and then can I just move it? Ah, that's cool. Right, so I'm kind of A pausing this guy I'm not really worried about certain aspects just yet. I'll just block them out. Control E and then it's moved down. I think if I press uh, Z, it'll lock it. No. Z zoom. Anyway, just move that down, move it back. And then I want to bridge these two edges. Is there a bridge function? Complete Nubit Blender, definitely. Uh, Z, X, C, O, Q. It does work. Um, I'm not going to be the fastest with this whole tutorial uh, type thing. It's not a tutorial, it's a learning curve. Um, but I want bridge. And there are bridge edges. Learning Blender. Coming away from 3ds Max and Maya and adopting the new school. Edge, bridge, edge loops, bridge edges. Right, this is not working the way I expect. Bridge, edge loops. Ah, okay. I think I think I did the wrong thing. I'm gonna choose these. I'll press Control E and just move it. And. I think those should have just snapped. Let me just check those. Yep, yeah, that's cool. That's good. Auto snapping is good. So two for the edges, choose these and edge, bridge edge loops. Alright, I'm a little bit closer to the shape now, bridge edge loops. And then just toggle my mirror modifier. Cool. Let's add a little edge loop somewhere here. So now if you hold down, you can actually slide it in place. Otherwise it sits in the middle. Right, and then go to that. Please move them here and two, choose the two edges and do that bridge thing. And reduce that a bit to point two. Right. 
His legs are wee and stumpy. Okay, now we can start to get the proportions right. Uh, there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could subdivide and sculpt it a bit, which I'm tempted to do, but let me just do as much as I can in 3D first and we'll see if I need that. So we'll add one here and I'm just going to choose the face. Oh, Q to come out of that and E, uh, Alt, Alt E and drag it out. Now, because I've done this whole face, there's going to be an inside face in here. So I just want to toggle the little screen and choose any faces that I don't want to delete the face. Right, proportions are all out, but that's fine for now. I'm just going to move a few bits. I don't want this select, I want that select. That's it. <sighs> When you extrude, if you press Z, it will be confined to that axis. Yeah, when I press Z, something different came up. Let's try it. So Alt, E, Z. I'm getting this. It's a zoom thing. I think because I changed it to industry standard, there's a few things going a bit awry, maybe. Control R to edge loop. Oh, that's a nice one. Cheers, man. I will use the shit out of that. Um, control E to bridge edge loops if you find that easier. Now, my shortcut keys might be different from yours because I've made it industry standard, but let's try that real quick. Uh, two for the edges. Control E gives me that extra thing. Uh, control R, you said. Yeah, I'm getting different stuff. Maybe using old school blender shortcuts. I probably need to set them up, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I've got nothing in industry compatible, but if I look in blender, Bridge. Find something in the there. Don't know how to use Blender. I'm a Blender noob. Uh, let's just do it my way for now until I learn all the cool stuff, like the pros. Right. Let's add in a little edge look for his legs. I know you guys are probably like, ah, oh, he's such a new bit blender, I could do this much faster than he can. Good. Good for you, I'll catch up <laughs> very soon. I will catch up very soon. Um, right, let's just try to fix some proportions. I'm gonna bring his legs even lower. I'll rip him here. All these shortcuts uh, that definitely speeds up your workflow for sure but at first you have to kind of do it without and just learn the, the basics two three and that's my snap threshold there okay it's something close up uh, three control e and then off the normal Uh, one, let's do lasso select. How did I change that? Here, yeah. lasso select, choose these guys. Let's choose them about. Ah. How does one choose both sides? Where is the ignore back faces? I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. This one, 
It's the x-ray, isn't it? I know that'll work. That will work, but I guess my ass would be super super slow compared to me. Yeah, look, it's cool. You can't I'm coming out of my and Max straight to Blender and it's it's not too bad. Like the the mirror thing, the live mirror, that's kind of like Max or Maya's and yeah, just slowly learning. But it's cool to be able to use something that's been so frowned upon for so long. But now it's finally um, talking the same language, if you know what I mean, as industry standard stuff. So that's made a lot of um, Autodesk savvy people a little bit happier because we might not have to fork out for a license soon. <laughs> Especially as mine needs updated and that's another reason why I want to explore this. Okay, that's more like flat. How am I going to get his ears in for less than 700? Oh, do we get um, poly counts and stuff as well? Informations? Alright, I'm going to have to google a couple of things. First off, I want to Google, what was it, uh, Backface uh, Blender 2.8 Backface Ignore or something. You use X-Ray, okay that's what I used. Alright, that was the answer to that. Um, and. What was the other thing? God, I forget, my brain's fried already. Oh yeah, information. Uh, Blender 2.8 model info. It's probably already here a bit and I just can't see it. Where's the stats? Look at the bottom right. Uh, yeah, nothing unless it's in here. Object mode, maybe. Two .8, let's try two point nine. See, this one two point nine. I'm. Am I looking in the right place? How many polys am I actually using? Yeah, I don't see it. Must be a different one. Let's try two point nine. Wait, someone's already answered me. Uh, no. Where is the statistics? Statistics. Ah. Yeah, there's an info bar, isn't there? Oh, there we go. Viewport overlays. Statistics. There we go. All right. Ah, we got loads, loads of budget. Right. I wonder how white to make this rainbow face then. I'm going to add another divide all the way around so we get some roundedness as well. So back to two. Let's do this one and put that there. What would be good is you know, there's a thing in Max where you put this down and it would sort of push out a bit. But that doesn't seem to happen here unless Maybe I just scale it. Yeah, it's not scaling off the normal, so I'm asking for too much. I'll just do it manually. That's all right. So 
So I guess the the reason for not coming from max to blender is because I'd be way too slow. Like Hugs mentioned, um, Free Hugs basically said, would be way too slow in blender. And I totally agree. But if you've got the time to learn it, then you'll get faster. Um, so I think that's okay. Let's get wee feet and they happen way down here. So I'm just gonna cut in somewhere here. Forgive the Scottish accent, by the way. I'm trying my best to make it more legible than normal. More, uh, what would you call that? Listenable. Um, what do you call it when you're listening to someone? Legible. Legible is to do a writing. But what is it when it's someone speaking? Understandable. Right, and I've missed a few bits because I should have that X ray on. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, no one's in the Discord yet. Everyone's still sleeping. Sunday morning, guys. You should be up like bouncing rabbits. Twitch Jamie and Free Hugs. You guys are legends. This is considered very early for Sunday. You're probably watching on your phones, mind you. Right, let's turn that back off because I can't really see the shape. Right, he needs a bit of a belly. So I'll use the cut the knife thing. Hmm. I don't know if it's reasonable to go from here, but we'll see. If I want to change that later. Right, enter. That just works. Some things are instinctual, like pressing enter on a knife cut and things like that. They're just instinctual uh, cue to come out of it. Yeah. Very Max and Maya like. Space, yeah. Gonna need something for your let's do a cut there. Um being a bit slower now. Let's put one to the knife again, this one. Also in the back. And one to here. Uh, let's do slide that down. So I'm just holding, so instead of just clicking, I'm clicking down and moving up and letting go. So that works quite nicely. Uh, I want to collapse the edges inward, and because I've got that, the options of auto merge on, you need to be in one of these, right? Uh, and then that will come up. If I'm only in object mode, uh, I don't get that. So you have to be in one of these. And then auto merge, and I, I've set it to that. So it means when I move one of these points up and let go, it will snap to the nearest one. Oops. Now, the question is, is my poly count based on one side? So if I want to save this now, actually, before I do it in drastic, let's do desktop, new folder. Wait, no good. 
Did I save that? the modifier thing so let's rename that as well way more good uh, modifiers and then apply how do you apply it I thought you could just click a button I guess this is like uh, delete history, um, something like that, admire. And then max, this would be collapse the stack. Select object and say underneath the scene tree, find a little wrench icon and click it. This opens a modifier pane on your right hand side. Click on add modifier. Here, add, that's how you add a modifier. That's now you apply modifier. Apply modifier button not appearing. Make sure the object you want to edit is active. Maybe it's a certain mode. used it before. Let's try Blender 2.9 apply modifier. a down arrow apply ah okay let's go into object mode apply all right cool so that's now baked into one shape and the reason why I wanted to do that was lost my train of thought <sighs> why did I want to do that I forget I uh, totally forget why I wanted to do that now. Um, any ideas why I wanted to do that, anyone? I wanted to apply that because... Anyway, he's all one big shape up here. Could have missed that. He's got a whole shape here. Uh, I guess... I want to do that because I want to sort of get rid of half, right? Let's turn that on. Let's do, how do you do perspective off? There we go. Delete verts and, right, so the reason I wanted to do that is for the middle line sort of was perfect. And now I can sort of just edit bits. so good. Now there's something you can't do in Maya, just tumble like an orthographic view, straight into perspective, boom. Uh, so there's, I'm not dissing Maya, I'm just saying what, what's missing in Maya that Blender does that's maybe adopted from 3ds Max or whatever, or other sensible software um, that I've used. Definitely not dissing the software that we've used, definitely not. Never do that. 
Um, okay, I know the reason why I wanted to do that because I want to take it into the sculpt room. So right, I'm going to apply that again so I can just apply mirror, Y axis, and we've gotten back. <sighs> I'm definitely not happy with the shape right now, but at least it's a start. Oh yeah, do you know why I wanted to do it? So I could check the poly count. All right, I want to know if I'm, these numbers are the current polys without the modifier. There we go, I remembered my, what I wanted to do. So we'll get 100, and, 100 verbs, right? 178 triangles. And if I apply the modifier, so I think I need to go into object mode for it to work. Let's drop down, apply. Yeah, there we go, so I'm at 356. That's what I thought. So it's only showing me what's actively unmodified. So if I was to use subdivide, I'd get a bit of a lie as well, I'm sure. So if I add a modifier, subdivide, uh, subdivision surface. Um, I get one, four, five, six, because that's one side of it. And I guess if I was to apply that one, one, four, five, six, and then apply that one. All right, okay, that's not the same. Hey, don't need subdiv. Um, I'm gonna now apply that, right? So I'll apply that and go into sculpting. Cool, and then I can use my Wacom. And let's see, control so this alt and small button, big button, and just there. Ah, cool. Right, that works. Symmetry, okay, we've got it in the wrong axis, so why that off? Yeah, cool. And let's do the grab tool, which I think is one of these. Elastic deform, that'll work as well. And yeah, now I can kind of and use a smooth button. So it's a little bit like ZBrush now, which is, see for free, man, for free, you've basically got ZBrush and Maya or Max. It's a complete no brainer. Like, why wouldn't you? Do you know why? Because people have paid so much money for Max and Maya that they're pissed off. Pissed off at the world for making free stuff. It's so good. That's not a bad thing, guys. One day we'll get rid of money and all that shit as well. You know, who knows? I don't want this smooth to be so strong. Why is it? Ah, you know why? Because I'm thinking ZBrush. It doesn't work that way. You have to choose the smooth brush. Then do point one. And then, as you use a different brush and you're using smooth, it's a lot less strong. It's too unstrong, it's too weak. Point one. Let's go back to that. Okay, there we go. Just want to nudge it a bit. Right, I still need to put the ears in, but that's cool. I need to imagine some of the shape. So I like to put them at the same sort of angle and then move bits about. It doesn't have the same each is a ZBrush, that's the only thing, so. Right. Brush sides, yep. How about topological? Maybe if I have the way you can see the... Hmm. Grab. Oh yeah, grab's kind of topological. If I make the brush too big. All right, still moves everything, but I'll just make the brush smaller. Oh. Fall off. I 
like his wee feet poking through. That's great. Modeling like this is much easier for me. Maybe you guys prefer the sculpting side to modeling, but I basically had to get a base in first. I uh, just need to make sure I don't pull any of these shapes inwards too much as well. Right, I need more geometry for sure. And how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to do like psh, psh, for the fingers and psh, psh, for the thumb, like my description. Psh, psh. That's it. That's the sound of extruding. Psh, psh, psh. All right. Okay. Um, it's still like all kind of one big shape here. It's a tiny bit of a yut outward. Ringles tend to have kind of finish heads, don't they? If I look at a ringle. Is that a rhino? I guess it's part of the ringle family. Yeah, they're quite, you know, that kind of proportion. I guess the ears here are like much lower down than you'd expect. It's influenced by Ringo. It's not anatomically perfect, but I will go a little bit narrow, narrower with the head. Right, okay. Can't wait to get to UVs. Looking forward to that. That's one thing that I've avoided Blender for. And I guess at what point am I going to switch to another bit of software? I'm going to try and not. I'm going to try and do the whole thing in Blender for all the greatness that it boasts. Right. The arms are a bit long, but I'll fix that later. And they look like they could reach right down to his knee. So yeah, it's not far off. All right, going back to the normal room. So modeling. Don't use the pen anymore. Use the mouse. And we'll just check. That's cool. I feel I need a little kind of handkerchief, sweating, <laughs> sweating with the blender usage. It's tough. All right, come back to that. And I guess I've not got the mirror mode on now, so I'm going to go front on or, yeah, like that. And choose all these verts. Oh, let's do x ray so we get both sides. Delete verts. Okay, and then modifier, add modifier, mirror, y axis. Be good if it remembered that, but I'm not here to critique Blender. Let's put x ray back off. Uh, let's extrude this face here. Control E off the normal. 
and then two uh, Q two Let's do E and change this to local, normal, normal. And this one move, what about local, normal? Yeah, it's not quite the normal. Yeah, we have a lot of gimbal. Gimbal will do it. Get these ears in. Get the ears. In. So I'm trying to stick to as low poly as possible. Uh, I may have to add a loop here. I can always like collapse any weird loops. You know, I want to make use of the shape if I put it there. So I might push and pull it a bit. Good to get that little in there, maybe. But we'll see. Just imagine they are little NPCs in an RTS game, like they're tiny. Uh, control E off the normal. Let's go twice actually and then up. And then Q to Yes, I need another loop. Ah, oh, damn it, it snapped it. It's too close. See, too close. I'm going to change that option. Make this a bit smaller now. Point oh one. We'll survive the snapping. <laughs> what are my thoughts right now? My thoughts are here sucks. <laughs> it's back to the sculpting room, so I'm gonna I wonder wait, I wonder if Sculpting. Will that automatically? Yeah, it's automatically symmetrical. Okay, so it's still applying the modifier. That makes sense, actually. Um, the only thing is I'm pulling the middle part, but but for quickness, that's actually good. Just to come in here and fix these ears a bit. Maybe they're just too low poly or something. Um, what do they need to work? They need a kind of inward this, don't they? Oh, wrong side. Shouldn't that work both sides? Uh, it only works on the side that's active as well. That makes sense too. Right. It needs another division down, I think. So back to modeling and 
just check the um, new one here. Okay, cool. Let's do. Let's try to look cut. Yeah, that work. And then back to points. see people come to check out my stream and be like why, why is he using blender <laughs> why is he using blender what's he, what's he doing what's this guy all about i'm using blender because it's much cheaper and it's much better than max and maya put together and better than zbrush oh my god i'm ruined the ears at some point what happened okay I know why that's annoying so this auto merge for anything that you move it's gonna actually calculate that so I've got it too high <sighs> right you need to be very cautious when you model stuff look constantly walking on eggshells especially when you get used to software that sort of thing might work. They look like robot ears but it's to do with the shape. Like all of this just sort of becomes one shape and okay. So no. Nah. Got loads of room to sort of fix this. See what my count is at. Where's my stats going actually? They've gone. Why did they go? 456 triangles. Oh, I'm already at the limit. If I apply this modifier. I know it's taken into account this thing. Why did that? Ah, uh, because I was in the cube. All right. What? Object mode. All right, okay. So object mode will tell me the total. Four hundred fifty-six. Still loads of budget. Yeah, so far I'm liking Blender. Uh, I don't really think it's all that bad. That's why I'm using it. Uh, inset, is that an inset? It is an inset. Ooh, okay. Do you put it in? Let's rotate that. 
here just so we don't have a weird polygon. Right, I want the axis to be in the middle. Individual origins, that will work. Or median point, yeah. By the time this is all coloured in and textured, it will look great. Trust me. Trust thyself. this little circle so in space that's going to be the little claw things so a bit there a bit there should be enough and hmm how will I do this one maybe extrude this face just a bit and then one Q of these This is where my threshold thing could be good, so point 0.1 and I think if I just move these about, there we go, snap. I feel like this should be put out somewhere where I can use it quicker, but that will do it. Uh, two to move this one. Again, you can have triangles, especially in something low poly. See, Rob said, Rob said I could blame Rob from Ramsey R. Uh, just checking a few things. I'm getting a getting an art book today. Uh, Art of Diablo. Can't wait for that. I've been a big collector of art books lately. I've got um, I've got the Ghost of Tsushima. Not too sure about the game. It looks cool and everything, but uh, I like the artwork, I like feudal Japan stuff. And I've got The Last of Us 2, which I've yet to open as well. Let's see, extrude face. What's this extrude region? What does that do? Don't break it, don't break it. Let's just go back to faces. I think that is that actually, so uh, I'm just taking that unknown. Something like that. I'm not 
took care of it, these being animated and everything, but I'm tempted to put in a little loop here just so they can. Yeah, let's do it. So I'll do a knife cut actually, knife cut here. They just need that because they're going to close in the inside, so you just collapse that triangle. Yeah, wee bum. Yeah, just cut like through screen space. See that? Did you see that? That was weird. Well, I guess that's what it does. Now let's do the same for the thumb. Uh, let's do it this side. Press four, object mode, I'm at five, six, four tries. I still got room for more stuff. Let's knock in the knee pad areas. In fact, I need some splits in the legs, don't I? For deformation, so let's do this. Wood cut. Let's do a couple actually and then collapse them at the back. That's got to be the best feature yet. Just moving it up like that. That's cool. Uh, I'm just going to collapse one of these edges. Right. Two. Bring this out for the knee pad. stronger. By the way, we've got room. Uh, can I do a cut in a bevel? That would be good. Let's see, cut. And let's just do that. And then choose the edges. Bevel these. The bevel. Yes, it works. Ah, it just works. Do the scale in the normal so I can flatten them out and move them. Just want to get a kind of general shape here. 
uh, I need to watch my angons. Let's tidy this up a bit as well. work so well with those. As you can see I'm making a complete mess of the geometry as one likes to do halfway through a model. I'm pretty sure that's perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. This part of blue team. No problem. Right, let's see how good it gets rid of edges. Let's save it so far. Let's see, I want to remove, I think it's dissolve or something. Solve edges, there we go. Okay. We need that bit. Right, I'm gonna choose faces. And extrude that out, scale it. Give it a little bit hard. And choose this face and pull it out a bit. Right, I think I'll go back to the sculpting room, but I'm going to apply everything. Let's see what we're at. 684 triangles, very close to the, the budget limit, and we're pretty close to getting the whole shape ready. Might add another loop in here just to see what happens if we get up to the count, because overall, I think he's okay shape wise. Um, yeah. So add another loop in here for deformation. Can fix that in a minute. And we're at what we at from row seven hundred and four. Right, can I get rid of four triangles to get to 700.
okay this is going to be interesting I'm going to explain this in a second right I'm going to dissolve that hedge right see we lost two triangles there that annoys me because this poly is made of two triangles and when I cut that there it was still two triangles but I actually reduced the count so that's not giving me a true reading but we're at 700 tries now hmm I wonder if there's a triangulation blender triangulate modifier it's a modifier okay let's add a modifier let's first apply this and let's save it and apply right and then add a modifier triangulate it says it's here okay triangulate so that's converted everything to triangles and now if I go into edit mode right, let's do object apply right. and then edit mode see there's our triangles and that's exactly what I had before yeah it decided to count it differently anyway we're definitely at 700 triangles that's in triangulated so if you don't like the way the triangles go, you can reverse them. Uh, like I could take like this edge and this edge, dissolve the edges and put the cut the other way. And you see it's already done that automatically because it looks different. Right, but that's like nitpicking and nobody would do all this triangulation work in the end. It's nuts. You may, but you might not more than likely you won't you won't right that's enough of that let's go back to here sculpt room uh, y-axis and get our black on pen and make some changes using the move brush here should be moving both sides yep and now I just want to fix up the shape. So we're at our 700 triangle limit. This is our good, and we're just going to work on. I'm just going to work on the shape overall. What about the blender backdrop? You change the color, gender, background, color. How to change background color and blender. I'll get a full video for it. Awesome. Must be complicated. Okay, it's under themes. Three D viewport. Good. Theme space. single color okay cool now let's make this a bit darker okay it's better. I'm so excited because we're almost at the point of doing UVs and I'm totally dreading it I'm just happy to get this far, but I'm not going to give up. Oh, the other thing I need to do is um, smoothing the shading sort of stuff. So 
I'll do that in a sec. It's a shame I never got the roundedness in that, but I can just do this. And what about displaying in wireframe? Shading with wireframe would be good. Color. Never mind. No fussing. I think there might be a little kind of flap going down in the front, but I'm beyond that now. There's a lack of space here for stuff as well. I need to bring these legs up a bit. I must admit, I've got used to it very, very quickly. It's Compared to Blender 2.7, it's it's just night and day. Like it's totally fine. We are actually going to start using Blender at uni. Um, Max, Maya, and Blender. So I need to get basically ready to teach it because that's what I do, and this is a total dry run at everything, making sure. That it just you know is easy to explain and stuff like that. Um, right. Okay, I'm gonna call that good for the the base shape. There's a lot of things not perfect and I guess these can be a bit thinner actually. Right. It's kind of a pose like this with his hands front. It's not a pose like that. It's a bit of a worry, but once he's rigged, it just means that he wouldn't follow any sort of custom uh, stock animations very well. He may, he may twist his arms back because it's expecting it to be posed like that. Um, but he's not going to be animated. He might get posed. He might pose him later.
looks like shitty geometry. Let's go back to modeling. I'm gonna check the back of those ears. Yeah, I don't want that. I want it to go straight down. So uh, I'll just treat each side independently. Oh, see, it kept it 700 this time. So that's good. And uh, yeah, that triangle is fine that way, maybe. Let's just go one, pull these back. See, if I don't like the way that triangle goes, because it's indenting here, it's gonna go indent inwards. If I look at it like, you know what, it's so minor. I'm not gonna bother with it. But if I was super fussy, I don't know like the way that move goes. Just move back away. That's fine actually. That moves the right way, but I could always like cut cut it that way. Let's see what happens if I do that. So all wedges and Getting, getting it looking worse. Okay, okay. So we've just forced it to be like that in case when we export it, it decides to do it the other way. But most of the time, it will use the shortest length. Is how it likes to work it out. Uh, everything else is going to be drawn in. Everything that you see is just going to be drawn in, and I can even use this as a kind of. Uh, projected texture for some parts, especially the, the head here and some parts here. And I'm just hoping that the rest of it does what it's supposed to. Um, it's time to do the UVs, guys. UV time. Is there anything else that I've missed? Gonna save it. Right, UVs in my in Blender. I've never done really for a character. I've never done. I've done it for tables and chairs and stuff. So, where's our UV UV editing? Let's move him. Let's move him there, just so you guys can still see him. In fact, you probably can't see him because of my. You can't see my camera, that's cool. Saves a bit of time. Okay, navigation seems good. Let's choose some polygons. Control A. Um, what about auto stuff? Unwrap. Let's save it actually in case we get a weird crash. Um, any tips on using the this? <laughs> any tips? Anyone? The uh, mirror split live unwrap. That's live unwrap. Seems for my own packet errors. Sketch align. Try mark seams, so let's go to edges. Let's see if this works. And do mark seam.
double click gives you loops until it meets a, a pole. Uh, mark seam. It's not really showing me anything here though. I've no idea. UV maps. Alright, it's not intuitive. Oh, I've got the mark seam here. Ah. Ah. Okay, let's try that. Blender, the most amazing 3D software in the world. So right click, mark seams. What is it? Mark seam. Ah, this is what I hate. See, it should go from seam to seam. And this is a little pet peeve that I have with Max as well, but I've managed to work out a way around it. Mark seam. So that is going to open up that part. Let's cut the head. In fact, let's cut around here because it doesn't matter as long as it relaxes. Mark seam. And I have no idea if I'm doing this right yet. I might find that this is all in vain. Mark seam. Let's cut the ears. Mark seam, mark seam, mark seam, mark seam. I'm begging you, don't mark my scene. I'm using shift to uh, continue selecting extra stuff. I think normally that's control, at least. I think that's what it is in Max. Right, that's going to unwrap the front and back, sort of, kind of. Might have to do a bit more with that. Can I see what's happening yet, or is it just a case of marking everything? Let's just do front, back, legs for now. As I want to see some progress with ah, oh, you. already up the same line, let's go for that, mark seam, you fluffing burger, maybe I shouldn't swear, there might be young blender users here, right, okay, mark seam, can I see some progress here please, unwrap, Choose all the faces. Control A. Unwrap. Ah, yeah, we're cooking. Yes! <laughs> Celebration. I feel good. It's one o'clock. I may have to get lunch on fairly soon but I will continue doing these and then stop for a break. What if, what if what if I don't want to mark the scene? What if I want to unmark a scene? What if I want to do faces? UV unwrap faces. Smart UV project unwrap. Okay. Still got the scene there though. Uh, Unwrap faces, cube projection. Still got the seam. Edge mode. Unmark seam. Clear seam. Okay. We, we don't know. We don't want that. Uh, what are we doing there? Clear, oh, clear shot. Clear seam. Okay. So faces. Don't 
Bam, bam, bam. And UV. UV project. Okay, I think that did that. No, it didn't. Um, okay, projection. Okay. Choose all. Choose the all. Control A. And then UV. Pack islands. I want to do pack with scale. Average island scale. Okay. UV pack islands. All right, that's a workflow at least. What's going on here? How does it disappear all the time? What's the point in that disappearing? I've seen this before. What's this? There we go. So that little button, which should be on by default, is the one that basically has a job of showing you nothing or showing you what you're currently working with, which you can see anyway because it highlights it. So pointless button needs to go, I say. Do you agree that that button should go? I think you do. You don't have to say it, you can tell. <laughs> Everybody would think that button's useless. All right. Even though I've marked the seams here for it to give me these, is it giving me these islands correctly? Yeah. And this has just got a split in it. Why would it not show that as a seam as well? Don't ask. Don't ask. I'm just asking myself weird questions about Blender being a bit odd. Right. Let's unwrap this hand here. I don't want to slide all the way up there, so I'm going to do them one by one. Mark seems. You know what's going to happen here now, because I don't have seams around these feet. If I do a unwrap, I'm going to lose that. Right, I figure I'll figure out a workflow around about it soon because people that use Blender would know better, and uh, I've got no real massive Blender experiences here because nobody's telling me anything. I'm all alone, apart from you guys learning as well. So Mark seen right? So I bet you I choose everything. And I do uh, unwrap. True enough, my feet have gone back to being joined. So why can't I choose these faces and do like mark, mark UVs or something, mark seam? It's chose it done them all, right? Mark seam island or something. That's annoying because that is annoying. So now I'm just going to choose the edges and do it the boring way. No fun. That's no fun. Mark seam. At least we know it works and all that other stuff. So front and back legs, I'm just going to have like that. I don't really care because it's all just going to be diffuse colour and get away with a lot more. Arms all the way around, back there, uh, the head's a bit weird. Let's just cut it here and here. Mark seams. What's this part? The ear. 
about books. stop working. Let's do there. Yeah, that, that bit. Mark seems. And then these bits are one mark. Checker preview thing as well. What's this viewer mode? Blender UV checker. new image choose maybe test grid even grid okay and how do we preview that here You also see the viewport choose texture as your view options and choose the texture. Uh, choose the and assign the newly created UV test grid texture to your object in the materials tab. Oh, that is lame. stuff. Help me if you can, I'm feeling Oh yeah, I'll be there soon. I'm sorry, I'll be there. Alright, I'm gonna break for a bit after I figure out how to apply these textures. Uh, UV grid, done with that. So there's some sort of node thing. There's nodes. Nodes. What if I don't want a color? What if I want a picture? Mm. 
boy. Um, doesn't actually change yet. Uh, uh, hmm, metallic. What's this? Uh, background diffuse. Oops. Uh, oh. Ah, there we go. Oh, that was, that was easier than I thought. <laughs> that wasn't all that bad, right? We got decent checkers everywhere, that's the point. Nothing stretched. Uh, I think I'll cut these legs differently. Let's do the inside. So I'll choose edges. Ah, see, I wish it would just stop at... Um, These mark seam, choose these. Clear seam. And yeah, that will unwrap a bit nicer, I think. Should actually keep the seams to the back. Yeah, I'm I'm an idiot. But in saying that, yeah, I'm gonna have a bit of space issue. Let's just try that. Uh, let's see what happens. It's so hard to see anything now. Um, let's see. Unwrap. Control A. Unwrap. That's fine, fine, fine. Let's stretch there though. I'm going to cut across this way and up to the back here. Mark seam. this new pod, why is that lit up? No idea why that's lit up. Is there a double poly in there or something? Oh, it's cut. What? as well. Okay, still got the hand to do it.
okay no overlaps that's good uh, I guess we're probably good to texture it later and that wasn't at all bad that took let's see about two hours maybe started around about 11 is the video open on for yeah I never in 50 minutes but who's who's timing this you me no nah. learning takes as long as it takes and hopefully that's made it a bit easier for you guys to to use um I've noticed that if you go into faces with this and it does some unusual stuff, like it's separate and you wouldn't expect that. So I'm going to figure out why does that, why is that? Uh, oh yeah. All right, it's only because it was selected or something. It's like that. What about control D, what about deselect, select none. That's still highlighted. Um, Blender selecting UV faces cuts them out. Uh, no, so I don't want to define what's happening. I want to define how to move UV faces without it being cut. Blender. be a way of actually not actually affecting the blooming you know what I mean you know what I mean like is that edge actually that edge and why is it moving there and then it should be moving to the median point not the individual origin um, the cursor the uh, the um, Bubble, 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 Funky. Is that this proportional editing linear? Okay. Nobody wants to move things like that. difference between those two tools unless that does different stuff yeah like scale and whatnot it can be useful I think but it's selecting like like it's the 3d doesn't make any sense let's tweak Why would you not? It's just connected only. <laughs> Why is it constantly selecting this guy? I don't understand. Yeah, alright. So, a lot to be desired there. Oh, and it crashed. Hey! It crashed because it's UV stuff's not finished, probably, and too bad. Uh, how far did we get? But luckily, I think 
I don't know what we'll say. Ooh, this one. Some work from here. Uh, let's see. Open recent. And I'll do it. Let's save. Ah, I lost all that work. Wasn't too much. I did the ear at least. Uh, the legs. Right. An alternative to this crap is to use 3D coat, but 3D coat is going to cost you money. I'm trying to avoid everything that costs you money. Um, hmm. What is a free software that can do UV, UV editing? Now we have to do everything in Blender. We can't cheat. No cheating, no cheating, no cheating, no cheating. Um, I'm gonna do it all in Blender. Right, I'm going to go and get some lunch and I'll be back. I'll stream again in the next half hour or so and I'll catch you guys very soon. For now, I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to end the stream here and I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching and when I come back, I'll fix the UVs and get to the texturing side, still all in Blender. See you guys soon.